Hey booze, hey, it is your girl, the Rising Phoenix Empath, coming at you from Maryland. And I wanted to jump on real quick and I wanted to encourage you guys today. Um, as you know, chosen ones, we are in our season of isolation, right? People have fallen off. We have had to cut people off. People have walked away. Um, and although this might be a painful season, it is. Um it is definitely for our greater good. Because as loyal as we are chosen ones and empaths, as loyal as we are, as ride or die as we are, the fact remains that we have to sever ties with some people because I'm telling you, some people will bring your vibration down so low. And you will never be lifted any higher than your thought process. And some people, as it pertains to you, they passively, aggressively put you down and minimize you and depreciate you. Let me give you an example of that. An example of that is maybe you're friends with your friends on Facebook and you see them commenting on all of their friends' pages. Oh, beautiful, pretty, beautiful, beautiful. Get to your page or get to your post and it's cute. Cute, dot, dot, dot. Right? And that's a small thing, right? But you've just seen this person post on all their other friends' uh, pages and timelines about how beautiful they, they are. Get to you and you're just cute. Dot, dot, dot. Let me tell you something. That is a passive, aggressive dig at your confidence. And it is time to sever ties with friends that would purposely make you feel less than and depreciate you. Another example, and both of these have happened to me. Another example is you telling a friend in your uh, season of singleness, you know, you know what you want to do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start treating myself to um, five star restaurants at least once a uh, once a month. And when I go, I'm gonna get all dressed up. I'm gonna invest in um, a purse, a designer bag that I never, you know, never had, but always wanted just to, it was, you know, just something that I wanted to do, right? Everybody's something, it's something different for everybody. It might be a truck for you, a car. See, I don't want that monthly car note, okay? So I will pick a big item expense, a one-time expense, do it, and cross that thing off my bucket list. I don't want to pay monthly a, a $1,200 car note, a $800, $900 car. That, that's not what I want to do, but I'm not going to make anybody else feel bad because maybe that's what they want. And if you work hard and if you can afford those things, then go for it. But I'm never going to make anybody else feel bad about their decisions and Anyway, the feedback I got was, mm, well, it don't take all that for me. We not talking about you. And it don't take all that for me neither. This is just something I want to do. I want to... I want to feel rich. And, and by doing these things and buying these things and having these experiences, I am manifesting the mindset of wealth. Because when you do certain things and when you're around certain things, you begin to adapt a mindset. And so that is my mentality. Not to be, um, you know into name brands or that I want to be shallow and get all of these expensive high-end things because I'm insecure. No, I want the experience and I will not be made to feel bad because I'm in a place where I can afford them. <laughs> Some of you have friends that love the broke version of you. You was there, boo. As long 
as you didn't have. And so really they can't, uh, the new you, the leveled up version of you makes them uncomfortable, babe. It is time to sever ties with people that will depreciate you, make you feel bad about, um, what you're doing and the things you're doing in life. And that will make you feel insecure about anything because the bottom line is when we are around people who don't think highly of us who think they're better than us when we are around people who are envious and jealous and who want to keep us in a low vibrational state and belief system as it pertains to us those people are a detriment to our lives because we look at them so regally. We look up to these people. We love and adore these people. And so their passive, aggressive, unconscious words and behaviors will imprint on us and send us an unconscious message about ourselves. And I'm telling you, Looking back over the years, over some of the friends that I've had who lorded over me with their accomplishments instead of empowering me and telling me, hey, if I did this, you can do this too. They wanted to keep me at bay because they saw the light and they saw the potential even when I did not. And so while the shedding of people may be painful, it is so necessary for you to reach the depths and heights that Source has for you. And these people must never be allowed into your energy again. Because truth be told, when you were with them, when they were with you, you were at your weakest. You embraced the mediocrity and you embraced the depreciation and you embraced being under their foot, you were okay with it because in your eyes, these are my friends, but they weren't your friends. They never wanted you to rise any higher than you were. They never wanted to see you fulfill your destiny. And truth be told, most people love you and want you to do good as long as you don't do better than them. And so let me say this. You don't have to strive to do better than anybody. That's not what I do. I just strive to be the better me. I am my own competition. I am. And in a lot of, of, of instances, I have been such a friend to these people who have betrayed me who have depreciated me, who have passively, aggressively attacked my confidence. I love these people. Right? And there was nothing I wouldn't do. There's nothing that I didn't do. I did everything in my power to see these people succeed and go further. And when they had their moments of um, celebration, I was there rooting them on. Every time something good happened for me, guess what? what guess what I got? Distance. A text. distance not calling me for several weeks after I got a job not calling me for several weeks after they found out I put a contract on a house and you know what they said about that they said well after you get this house um, is this going to be the last time you move 
but they said that because they had actually purchased the house and they wanted to be sure that I wouldn't upgrade again to get bigger than what they had gotten with their husband. Instead of being able to just celebrate me and say, look at you, you know, because what I got was exactly what I asked God for. And it's, it's perfect for me. And I didn't see it coming, guys. And I'm telling you, when you operate in a pure heart, when you do exactly what you were supposed to do in these spaces and places and relationships, even when the other party doesn't reciprocate, God will bless you in front of them all. And have them wondering, how in the hell did she do that? I can't even answer you. God has allowed me to be able to create a beautiful life for me and my son. I have a special needs son. And we live on a farm. We have three acres of land. Um, we had chickens. The chickens uh, were killed. <laughs> <laughs> by the predators so I have to find a way to secure the uh, the chicken coop that I bought right but we have three acres of land I grow um, I grow vegetables I grow I'm gonna grow herbs also this spring and I'm trying to roll out my small business um, <clears throat> but it's 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 literally the house I prayed for it's the life I wanted and every time I pull up to this house I say Lord thank you so much because I didn't do it competing with anybody I stay in my lane I try to be a good steward of my money I saved my money and I had to move an hour out to get what I wanted because land is expensive right so I moved an hour out, but it's what I needed. It's what we needed. And I said all of that to say that God will bless you too. Because I showed up for so many people who went flat when it came to them showing up for me. But the releasing of these people was such a blessing to my life because this is just the beginning. You cannot have envy and strife in your space during this time. This is a time where you connect with your creator. You get confirmation on your destiny and purpose and that you move full speed ahead with everything God has given you. And this for me is including to raising and healing my son the best way that I can. Chosen ones, a lot of times we also have the gift of long suffering and that long suffering comes with circumstances that we cannot control. But we can only move through and make the attempt because we believe that there'll be healing on the other side of that thing. And so I say to you today that while you may be lonely in this season, embrace it. Get to know you, get to know your creator, and continue to get the confirmation you need so that you can move into your destiny all while taking care of your family and being who you are supposed to be to them and being who you are supposed to be to the world around you and do not allow the mistreatment and betrayal and hateful actions of other people taint your spirit because my friends it was intended to break you, make no mistake. But the sooner and the quicker that these people were able 
that you were able to let go of these people is when the blessing came. They were never supposed to take part in this, this part of your life because they simply cannot take seeing you rise. And so if they couldn't take seeing your rise, they will not be able to take seeing you rise to higher heights and God taking you to higher, deeper depths. What will they do to stop it? Those people needed to be removed. They get mad when they see you post a pretty picture on Facebook and can't even really compliment you then. Cute. They get mad when you speak about your purpose and your destiny and the things that you want to do in your life to manifest the life you want. It don't take all that for me. It don't take all that for me neither, boo. These are things I want to experience. These are things I want to do. But identify these people because they've always been who they were in your life. You just overlooked it. You ignored those little things they would do and say. You ignored it. Time is out. You must protect your life and space from these people. As, um, I forgot his name. He's a uh, YouTube influencer. I love him. Trey Genius, I think. These Decepticons. Out here mad. After knowing your struggle, after seeing your struggle, how dare she? How dare he? How dare he mature and want to be a good husband and father? How dare she embrace singleness? How dare she be content? In being who she is. How dare she get her master's degree? Who does she think she is? How dare she buy a house? She ain't got no man. Let me tell you something. Men and women, right? Those haters had to go. Because where you're going, there'll be no room for negativity. Because your mind and your heart have to be clear and pure. So that you can continue to do the work God put you here to do. And trust me, while you do everything for everybody. And all you get is betrayal and um, non-reciprocity. God will, God will reward you and he'll do it right in front of them. Keep trucking. Keep being. Don't give up and know that what's on the other side is going to make this season all the more worth it. And that's not why we do it. We do it because it's what we are called to do. The other side of this thing, the blessings, right? That's just extra. But we simply thrive in the spaces of operating in our destiny and purpose. And that's why we do it. Keep being you. Don't let this change you. And know that if you didn't have haters, if you didn't have fake friends, if you didn't have betrayers, you wouldn't be chosen. It's a prerequisite. Till next time.